the best veggies with noodles and too many noodles your birds only gonna eat the noodles so she kind of really doesn't pluck she just keeps those those feathers plucked it's like yeah. her haircut in that style but this yeah. is beautiful and you've done a phenomenal job and Thank i think you. that your passion shows in this for sure yeah What is going on, Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch? Another video here on the ranch, obviously, as you guys can see. And we're here with Bird Tricks. Bird Tricks is going to show us, show you guys uh, some different types of uh, things we're going to learn about here on the ranch. We already walked around the ranch, but we're going to go over everything on the video today. So let's get back onto the ranch and let's go see what we have in store for you all. Let's go do it. All right, you guys. So the first parent we're going to go to is Lexi. Lexi is an eclectic female that we've had here for a real, real long time. I've had her since she was just a little nugget. We syringe fed her. And um, as you guys know, and you've seen before, she does de definitely pluck her feathers a lot. And so they have a couple things, I guess, if you want to yeah, help definitely. me out with. Yes. Okay, so I saw the enclosure and I decided, well, I kind of told Blake that these parrots, they actually breed year round. So it's really important not to hormonally stimulate her all the time because she's already naturally going to be that way. So when we first saw her earlier, she burrowed down into the bottom. So I was telling Blake how important it is to actually make kind of a solid bottom or something that doesn't have all these grasses where she can burrow and do that sort of thing. The other thing is the nest box. That's going to stimulate her all the time. So we want to take that out and then just basically replace all these old rusty toys with nice, fresh, new natural toys to give her something to do other than plucking her own feathers. But I know you have a plan. Yes, I have a plan. But personally, sometimes with me, like I always say, try to keep everything as natural as possible. Yes. So I put plants and everything in them. She destroyed them. So now this is like kind of all it grows. The weeds, the vines, definitely, they're not the prettiest, but that's just rainy season and they're just everywhere. Yeah. But, um, so sometimes not natural is probably not the best because then it's going to stimulate her to want to breed too much. And we don't have a male for her, so there's really no reason for her to even lay eggs. Exactly. And okay. if she does lay eggs a whole ton, we call that chronic egg laying, and it can lead to a lot of problems health-wise. So Got we it. just don't want to see that. So as pretty as it is, I think the green is actually really pretty and natural looking. However, because it's helping her be super hormonal, yeah. we Cut want that to out. get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the plan that actually I had you guys was I was going to move Marty, my kookaburra, into this enclosure and get this enclosure completely out of the way and just gut this area. No more cages here. I don't want no more cages when you walk into the front of the building. Just make it more planted and more natural looking. And put Marty in this cage. The reason why I want to put Marty in this cage is because the custom cage that we have for him, he is putting his face through the holes too much and he's getting scared from the capybaras, thing one and thing two. And he's hurting his face a little bit, so we don't want that to happen anymore. So we're going to switch enclosures, clean them all up, switch them up and then make the bottom of the custom cage solid so that Lexi doesn't dig on the bottom of her and help her out. So that will hopefully prevent her from plucking. Yes, hopefully. 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 I don't know. We'll see, we'll try it out. It's always, we're always learning as you guys know. Yeah. So yeah. make she it work. She pluck for the rest of her life, but at least- Well, she kind of really doesn't pluck. She just good. keeps those, those feathers plucked. It's like yeah. her haircut in that style. I don't know. <laughs> doesn't do much. It just stays like where it's at, yeah. but we can move right along and we're gonna go to the Amazons. Amazons. Let's go do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're gonna speak up a little louder because we have the neighbors working on putting leaf blowers over there, but you guys know we don't live in the woods. There's neighbors, so we're gonna let that be. So we're here with our yellow nades, blue fronts, and double yellow heads. And as you guys know, we made them a lot bigger enclosure than what they were before, but there are some things that we would like to change. And I've seen it in the comments before. A lot of people were mad with me. Uh, doing the PVC purchase. The only reason why I did the PVC purchase was one, to keep the cages from that bowing together, and two, so they always have purchase there, just in case I don't have to go in there as often, but I'm gonna let you guys start talking and doing the rest. <laughs> okay, so what we immediately see in these enclosures is we just, oh boy. The louder we talk, loud. the louder they get. <laughs> you have to stand closer. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> So we see a lot of room for enrichment. So we could add a lot more perching. Like I love how you have these natural branches in here, but if you could mount them up, okay. I think that would be awesome and just have them all throughout. I know we sent you some toys and I love that we see one in there. I think having those all throughout and multiple sides going from the ceiling, different perching, just having more variety I think in here and more enrichment is gonna make these guys more active. You know, I think about your otters and how active they are yeah, and yeah, just yeah. they always have something to do and they're so playful yeah. and I think you could get that same thing from the birds if given the right enrichment and environment yeah. to do so. 
Okay. Does that make sense? Do you have anything you want to add? No. And then another thing that I know we were talking about, and it's raining, you guys know it's South Florida, we'll, we'll keep on working in the rain, it doesn't really bother me. But I am actually gonna put automatic water in here because they make the food very, very dirty. The water dirty very fast, like every day. Obviously. Every parent. Okay, yeah, but that's it's a pain not in the butt. You. Okay. <laughs> but you guys were talking about um, the diet. The diet, you said, that's yeah. not the best diet. So think of it as, as like you go to work to get hundred dollar bills if you get hundred dollar bills for free would you go to work got it only if you really love the job right yeah. so basically we want to be able to give our birds opportunities to work for their food things that are mentally stimulating because in the wild if you think about it they're spending their entire day flying around expending physical energy yeah but you've provided the larger cages for that purpose yeah but then they're also foraging expending mental energy in the hopes of finding food but there's no guarantee in the wild so when we just give them a smorgasbord of like sugary, this is, I mean, I could eat this stuff, right? So this is just really not good for them. Yeah. Um, but then it also doesn't give them anything to work for because they're getting it all for free. Right there. So uh, definitely, like we always recommend our seasonal feeding system, which is a really finely tuned chop, basically, okay. with the right portions figured out to give your birds the best diet. And like you, you know, we learned the hard way, yeah. right? You know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, we were not feeding the right diets and our, our birds were suffering. Fortunately, caught it in advance uh, before it got bad. Yeah. And we were able to turn that around and create the seasonal feeding system so we can help all sorts of birds. So and that's why we're so passionate about sharing that yeah. message and stuff. But yeah, I think that you could even make a video making all that seasonal feeding Yeah, food definitely. And, they, and people that are probably asking what's a seasonal feeding and all that yeah. stuff, you guys, they could get it on your site. Yes, everything. definitely. So we have a whole cookbook set where we encourage you guys to digitally download it and make the food at home. And so I think it would be really fun for people to see you or your sister or your yeah. mom uh, yeah, I mean, making all the interesting. food. If we have a physical copy if you want or digital. Um, that's at birdtricks.com. My, my mom would definitely want the physical copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's old fun. fashioned. It's yeah. fun, but it's basically a lot of vegetables. It includes grains, it includes beans, sprouts, like all these different things, but wow. in specific ratios. So you don't have carb loading, which Amazon tends to love to do. They okay. just want to go for grains or pastas yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so we're really specific about the ratios of each one going Interesting. in. Interesting. So you have a specific diet for each species of bird? We have the seasonal feeding or... system basically <laughs> switches with the seasons. Got it. for all species of parrots except for lorries and lorikeets because they're nectar based. Yeah. But if you didn't pick up on it, it's about the right portion size. Yeah. So, yes, yes. Uh, and okay. that's where a lot of like other advices in forums and things are like, oh, feed this, this, and this. Yeah. But then if you feed the best veggies with noodles and too many noodles, your bird's only going to eat the noodles. So even though the intentions are really good from other people putting stuff out there, yeah. we've just found through personal experience that get those portions right, it's really going to be important. Yeah, so I think a diet thing is definitely in our future and should be fun. So definitely do the diet changes, fix that stuff up. And I'm sure, obviously, because I do want to breed some of these birds, that's not going to yeah. interfere anything of that sort, really. I don't think either. It's just going to make them stronger, healthier, and all around it's healthier. It's just the healthiest foods going in their bodies. So if anything, it should make them produce just as well. All right. We got one more area for you guys. Okay. Let's go check out the aviary, and then we have these guys coming right now on us. What's good, gang? <laughs> so we are... <laughs> He's like, I'm getting out of here, man. <laughs> so we're inside of my aviary. This is practically one of the biggest enclosures I have here on the ranch. And this is definitely probably one of the goals for all the animals here on the ranch because this is the most, I guess, efficient way to keep an animal in my way because it's so big, it's so natural, and the birds and animals can do what they want. It's the jungle in here. Everyone's coexisting and living life. So like I was mentioning to you guys in the future, hopefully one day... I can make that for the Amazons, but I don't know if I mentioned it to you guys before. I wanted to make this whole entire enclosure literally for the Amazons zoo mesh, but this is a soft build mesh right here and they'll chew right through here. And then people are going to be mad because they're going to be invasive Amazons in Florida. And <laughs> I guess we don't want that, but to keep them inside here to get the quote I wanted for this enclosure, I could literally bring it up on email was $190,000. I'm not the richest YouTuber in the world, and there's no way I was gonna pay for that that's right now. That's just for the, the mesh. That doesn't even include the structures yeah. to, to Correct. support it all. So I wouldn't even have to do the poles because it would be so heavy, it would just sag and it would just yeah. go to crap. So that's why I didn't make this the aviary for the Amazons right now. Maybe in the future, if you guys like this video and subscribe <laughs> to the channel more. But right now, <laughs> shameless. <laughs> yeah, right now, we're not doing that. And this is the, what, the best we could do for the birds that we have inside here for the trumpeters, the white crested tarocos, the waterfowl, and all that. That's definitely the goal in the future. 
And um, I can say this is the coolest private aviary I've ever stepped in. I like and, how you say that because a lot of people do say that. I did really try to make this as best as I can. And, and I would even first. put it up against like zoo aviaries where you know you don't actually get to go inside of most of those unless you know people. But yeah. like this is just the way you've done it. I mean, I'm not an expert on ducks, but uh, <laughs> but this yeah. is beautiful and you've done a phenomenal job. And Thank I think you. that your passion shows in this for sure. Yeah, and I think people need to understand that there's a huge difference between housing like waterfowl and parrots. Parrots are incredibly destructive. They right. find ways out. Um, and so it's way more expensive to build these types of beautiful enclosures for parrots than it is these types of birds that are a lot less destructive and a lot less uh, interested in escaping. So, so a lot of people probably get mad at me on this one. Every single time I do a thumbnail inside this enclosure, yeah. I put pictures of McCall's. Why do you do that? Because the colorful macaws, people love the macaws. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. There's no way I can put a macaw in here. They'll be gone in 20 Not seconds. Not for very long. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be gone so fast. I could probably free fly them in here. Like this oh, would yeah. actually be a really, really probably cool enclosure to free fly Lexi inside of here. Spot. Yeah. Great yeah, training spot. Great. Great training spot. Yeah, like we were talking off camera that if we had something like this for our macaws, our all of our parrots, we could absolutely do training in here, but you couldn't leave them unattended. And that's yeah. that's where it's like, okay, do we spend this much on a training facility or do we spend this much on a permanent, you know? Correct. And it's, there's a huge trade-off there. Well, I think if cool. you're highly active in training your birds and flying your birds, they don't need a massive cage because they're already, it's like going, they're exercising every single day. As long or as, no, you, as long know. as they're actively getting out, but really we like to say the bigger, the better. Of course, that, um, that's what I always say. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> what you said. Aww, um, but you. yeah, we, you know, well, I think also they keep themselves in shape if you have that big yes. enclosure. So yeah. then when you do go to fly them, you're not reconditioning them. You're just like, let's have fun sure. because they've been kind of keeping themselves in shape. So I love that you want to eventually do this with the parrots. I think that's amazing. And I totally support that mission. I also want something like yeah. this for parrots. Yeah, um, and we looked into Zoo Mesh too. And I remember we saw it at some professional aviary and we're like, oh, cool. Let's look into yeah. it. And we priced a much smaller enclosure and still we're like, you spend more on your bird's home than your own home. Like, oh, yeah. that's where we'd fall. I don't know about you, but we'd fall <laughs> into that category. Yeah. Um, so we're going to probably do it. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. Someday. I don't have a house yet. I've made all my animals' houses. It's still my parents' house, and I put everything back here. So, yeah, yeah I, I, need a, I might need to make a house soon. Yeah, I love it. I could hang out in here all day. Is there anything? I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, know. as far as this enclosure, I mean, this looks amazing to me. And like Dave said, we're not professionals yeah, on course. the birds that are housed here. So I don't have as much to, to say about what their enrichment would be. These guys look like they have tons of enrichment. It's just so cool. <laughs> I yeah, mean, they, they got just, swings, they got pumps. I try to make it as natural as I can for them. Everyone's full flight in here, natural trees, natural branches. Uh, everybody's just doing their thing inside of here. Yeah, Two separate like ponds for less aggression, hiding spots. Uh, all natural different types of fruit trees for different birds to forage through here as well to do their natural things they would do in the wild. Yeah, honestly, if you could take what you've done in here and with the otters and kind of apply that same mentality to the parrots, I think you would come up with amazing things. I know off camera again, yeah. we were talking about all the ideas you have for oh, enclosures yeah. and where you get your ideas and you were even giving us some ideas yeah. for some enclosures that we could possibly make in the future because I'd like to update ours. All right, you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the little talk that we had here around the ranch with Bird Tricks. Uh, they definitely taught me some things. We did a quick little version of the talk before this, but I wanted just to show you guys that they came here to the ranch, uh, taught me some things. We have it all written down. And um, thank you for coming by. Yeah, we yeah. can't wait to see what you do with all of it. Yeah, we definitely have to do it. We have to make it happen. And stay tuned for more things here on the ranch. I'll see you guys later. Peace out, everyone.